Grounded is believed to be set sometime in the 1980s somewhere in the United States. The theme is immediately noticeable by the clothes the teens are wearing, and there are several toys scattered around the backyard from this time period. These include the Frankenline, the Rash toy, and the Yoke Girth head. The Frankenline appears to be based on an Etsy sketch, but with a Halloween theme. Rash is one of the Battletoads from the Battletoads video game franchise, and the Yoke Girth head isn't confirmed to be based on any specific toy, but in my opinion it bears a striking resemblance to He-Man. A couple of interesting things about these toys is the first Battletoads game debuted in 1991, which means the Rash toy wouldn't have been around in the 80s, and etch sketches were more popular in the 90s than the 80s. I'm not sure if these are oversights, or maybe the exact time the game takes place will be left unsaid so that it covers a range of years. In any case, I thought it would be cool to look at the toys and other fads during this time period to see what else could be added in future updates. Having grown up in the 80s, I have fond memories of many of the things we'll be discussing. Before we begin, make sure to click the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. Let's get started. I grouped each of the things on this list with other similar items. First up is going to be action figures and dolls. I'd expect the things in this group to be the same as the two that already exist in the game, or they will be landmarks that have either a location quest, a scab, or raw science near them. First on our list is one of my favorite cartoons as a kid, G.I. Joe. Along with the show, there are of course action figures and lots of them. I play with them every day and watch the TV show along with He-Man every afternoon. I'm pretty confident if you did a little digging in my parents' backyard, you'd find a few G.I. Joe action figures hidden beneath the surface. With many of them having camouflage outfits, it will be easy to lose track of them in the yard with a tall, thick grass, like our backyard. Next up is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figure. Like G.I. Joe, these guys had their own super popular cartoon, which debuted in the late 80s and ran into the mid-90s. My brother and I had many of these action figures as well. With their green color, any one of the four would blend in well in the green grass of the backyard. Now that we've covered a few boys' toys, what about a couple of girls' toys? Rainbow Bright is first up, and she too had a popular TV series, along with a variety of other things like books, costume jewelry, and clothing. While I'm not as familiar with her as I am with the aforementioned toys, I do remember her being very popular around the same time. The second girl's toy that could possibly be added to the backyard and grounded is a My Little Pony. Like the others mentioned before, these toys had a popular TV show. There were a lot of different ponies, each with their own magical ability, and it would be hard to imagine any household in the 80s with a little girl not having a few of them laying around. So that's the four action figures or dolls that I think would fit the time period if they were added to Grounded. There were several others that didn't make the cut, and if I left out one of your favorites, let me know down in the comments. The next category in our list is games. Right now we have the Frankenline, but I think there's room for one or more games in the backyard. For these and the Frankenline, I think it would be cool if they had a quest related to them where you had to play them to complete it. For the Frankenline, it could be drawing a specific thing that Burgle asked you to draw. First up is a Rubik's Cube. Everyone has likely seen or owned one of these. Originally created in the 70s, it became super popular in the 1980s. I think it would be amazing if we had to either solve a Rubik's Cube to complete a quest, or maybe find some missing stickers to complete it. Our second game that would fit well and ground it is Light Bright. This game was a black canvas with holes in it, and you had to place different color pegs into the holes which lit up. The one shown as a clown face, and completing the clown face or another picture would be a pretty welcome addition as a quest. The third and final game is the Speak and Spell. This is one of the first handheld electronic devices with a visual display that used cartridges. The way it works was you would say a word and it would ask you to spell it. If you got it right, it would ask you another word, and if you got it wrong, you had to try again. This would be a no-brainer for a quest requiring us to spell a specific set of words correctly in order to complete the quest. Those are the three games that were very popular during this time period and could conceivably be laying around in the backyard. The third category I labeled miscellaneous, as these three things don't really fit in with the two prior categories, or the one that follows. The first is Garbage Pail Kid cards. These were similar to sports cards, but were sticker cards that were parodies of the extremely popular Cabbage Patch Kid dolls. Each card had an outlandish character with sometimes equally outlandish names. I could see a few of these scattered around the yard and unlocking a mutation similar to how finding all the juice boxes unlocks the juicy, juicy mutation. Next up is a Big Wheels. Everyone in my neighborhood had one of these bikes, and we would race them down hills, over ramps we made, and anywhere else we could think of. One thought would be having a small child riding one of these in the backyard as a potential natural disaster, or it could just be a landmark that has a quest, scab, or some raw science near it. The final entry in this category is a Trapper Keeper. Everyone had one or more of them when I was a kid, as they were super useful for storing tons of paper, and there were a lot of different designs. The one shown here is on the mild side, but many had bright colors, and oftentimes we drew our own designs on them. 
I think a Trapper Keeper would be a cool landmark that could contain a hidden drawing or note related to the grounded story. Our final category is apparel. If there's one thing the 80s is known for, it's the clothes and accessories we wore. I remember those days quite well, although looking back, I'd be just as happy if I forgot about the horrible fashion sense of that decade. First up in the apparel category is slap bracelets. These have been mentioned countless times in the developer live streams, and they would be an ideal addition to the game. Not only do they fit the theme perfectly, they could also be a useful resource. I could see using them as a way to launch ourselves up into the air or across the yard, and also as a new trap that closes in on us or the insects. Second up is a Swatch watch. These watches were very popular when I was a kid, and like the Trapper Keepers, many had zany, colorful designs. I could see us having used the parts from the watch to make a new crafting station or repairing the watch to complete a quest. The penultimate item on this list is already in the game, well kind of. It's the scrunchie. Poops is wearing one of these just like nearly every girl that grew up in the 1980s. It was an easy way to pull back your hair and they were stylish for the time. A scrunchie could fit as either a landmark or a harvestable item that could give us a new type of thread. The final entry on this list isn't exactly apparel, but it's closely related and that's hairspray. Big hair was all the rage in the 80s, and to get the best look, you needed to use some hairspray. We already have the haze area, so maybe a bottle of hairspray could be in a different part of the backyard and create a smaller haze area. Or we could collect the hairspray as a new resource to make new items. Either way, I'd feel right at home in the 80s again if I saw a big can of hairspray during my adventures in Grounded. So that's 14 things that could be added to Grounded that would fit perfectly with the theme of the game and the time period set in. Let me know what you think about my list, and if you have any things to add, let me know in the comments below. If you found this video entertaining, click the like button as it really helps my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.